I'm stalking about because I'm trying to film something I've never seen before. It's very elusive. Just down here. It's a very, very, very young chuff chick. Obviously chuffs produce eggs and they hatch into chicks. But you never really see a chuff until it's adult size like these ones. But for a few days now this very, very young chuff chick has been stalking around the garden with this group of chuffs. It quite often hunkers down into the ground to hide itself. I've never seen one before. I can only speculate that what might have happened is the nest has been raided. Maybe by a monitor lizard or maybe it just got rained out and the chicks had to start fending for itself earlier than they might normally. That might not be what happened of course, that's just idle speculation. I know it's a bit tricky to see but I think you can possibly tell the difference in scale. Try and move so that it's not being filmed through that fence. So you can see it's got a much shorter tail and it also has white markings on its head. I don't know how close they're going to let me get. It's just nestling down there in that taller grass. Even after all this time, there are still new things to be discovered here. Oh, I'm going to let them get on with the day. I've got lawns to strim. Slash mow. <laughs> Well, that was a bit random. <laughs> I don't know how well you'll be able to hear. It's quite windy. So I'm looking where I'm going because I'm walking along the drive to do a little bit more work on Operation Ditch. <laughs> it never ends. Um, basically, well, let me show you. For anyone who's new here, <laughs> welcome to yet another riveting episode. Essentially, um, you can see by all these puddles just the condition of our driveway is pretty pathetic. Um, but until we get a sufficiently strung together amount of dry days, there's not much I can do about this. You can't really fill potholes until they're completely dry. So one of the things I've been doing is reinstigating this old ditch which had been silted over and meant that rain would wash onto the drive so that any gravel that I had put down previously just gets washed away and it's hard work you know I'm shifting tons of gravel not you know a couple of bags here and there a while ago we had a spate of 
very wet weather coming so I did what I call a quick and dirty job so you can see like this is the neat part of the ditch where I had dug and then I did this quick and dirty job you can see how it's much narrower and it's quite probably shallower because I'm just trying so hard to save this section this is a particularly bad section of ditch um, of drive I beg your pardon the water just sits this is the last day you can see a bit of blue this is the last day of not rain and quite a lot of rain according to the uh, forecast quite a long time so I thought I'll just quickly come and see if I could do a little bit more improvements on the ditch because as you can see there's water 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 and then it dries out so clearly what's happening here is that I've got a disparity in the levels which means that it's allowing this section further up to still overflow even though now I've managed to dig the ditch almost the entire length of the driveway and then it feeds down the slope so what I need to do is really connect this section with this section to ensure that I've got proper drainage I hope to mitigate against water pooling here so uh, that is part of my fun for this afternoon and I'll crack on with it now there's a quick update so now you can see water is managed to get into this whole section previously it had been held back here it is still a bit of a quick and dirty job but um, under the circumstances you know, I've got other things I have to get on with before the rains um, mostly mowing the lawn surprise surprise <laughs> But I hope this means that um, the level of water in the ditch will stay a little bit lower. Hopefully now there's capacity to mean it won't overflow. The stumbling block is this section. Once I reach this undergrowth, it's just, it's just really not going to be possible for me to do too much there. And then likewise when I get to this section which has the tea tree there's just not much I can do about that either the um so bending over to pick up my glove the good thing about that is that this doesn't tend to overflow anyway it might just be that it's naturally a little bit deeper a little bit wider so therefore my hope is <laughs> come these rains we're supposed to have sorry I the ditch enough so that it will raise the level to be able to flow all the way down but not to the extent that it overflows onto the drive however there's only one way to find that out and I'll, I'll keep you updated there's more of that rain I was telling you about just a gentle shower at the moment but uh, we shall ignore that and carry on because I've got something exciting to show you or at least exciting to me <coughs> our new acquisition uh, we were taking a trailer load of leaves to the tip I'm carrying on with operation clear the perimeter of leaves uh, you will have seen me start that a few videos ago Anyway, so we were taking leaves to the tip and I saw this metal cabinet and I thought, oh, I, I have to have that because <laughs> um, I have things in here like the petrol um, for the ride on mower and which I mixed to make two strokes for wheels chainsaw. We also have things like paint, methylated spirits, linseed, kerosene for various um, equipment and devices and DIY stuff that we do and obviously my potting shed if I stand back inside it uh, is open to the elements it doesn't have a door which is fine I like that 
but it also means that uh, come a bushfire, <laughs> sparks and embers could easily drift into here, blow around and potentially um, ignite the flammable liquids and then burn the whole building down. So I've since long wanted some sort of cabinet that I could keep these flammable materials in. You can get specialist cabinets for that, they're jolly expensive. So I'm hoping this will perform that function. It's not one of those specialist cabinets. I don't know how well it would cope in a bushfire scenario. But it's metal and it's secure and I can keep things in here, I hope, a bit more safely. This isn't necessarily its final resting place, but this is where it is for now. So if I open it up, you'll see also that uh, Will very kindly made me some nice sturdy shelves for it. When we picked it up from the tip, it was just empty. Obviously a, a great big fire hose lived inside here. So obviously the shelves would have been an encumbrance. <laughs> but they're necessary for us, so we, we space things out, so hopefully this will be the good spacing, so uh, the petrol and um, two-stroke can go on the bottom, and then the other flammable liquids can go on these two shelves. What I'm going to do now is set it all up, and then rearrange this bookcase into here. Excuse the sound of rain, it's just come on a bit heavy, it's dying back a bit. So here's the fruits of my labours, I've managed to get my toolboxes on top which is handy because they were a bit awkward to get off the shelves. So I've got my tool toolbox and my sort of decorating miscellaneous toolbox but the most important thing is inside the cupboard. So at the top I've got stuff that could go on fire, fillers and tapes and stuff. On this shelf I've got my collection of paints and random things to do with sort of decorating or metal work or whatever. And then at the bottom I've got my petrol cans, my two-stroke can and that kerosene. So there's actually plenty of space in here, plenty of room to grow, which is great. But I can shut it up. And hopefully now that's all nice and secure and um, to make way for this I had to move some equipment so what I've done here is raise the shelves and put the chainsaws up here and ride it to the because it's the lightest and then I've taken out the shelves that were here and they're just temporarily there and then I've got my log of sole, my wood splitter, my axes and these table leg things which should be handy. And also I've been able to then tidy up down here a bit, get a lot of my buckets and storage on the shelves. Which just leaves all of this on my cotton shed bench for Will to deal with when he gets in. Anyway, I'm really pleased with that. Nice and safe and sound. And also, whilst I was doing this, I've had an idea for places that we could put some of this stuff. It's like Will's second straight tool, so like the stuff he doesn't use that often, a lot of this storage, um, this is stuff for decorating, this is my supply of garden bubble wrap. It would be nice to get quite a lot of this stuff out of here. So stuff that I want to keep but don't use that often and yeah, Will's second string tools which he wants to keep but doesn't use that often. And things like up here, some of our plumbing equipment, like pumps and hoses and things. I had an idea about what I'd like to do with that. So I've just had maybe the inklings of my next big infrastructure project, which I will let you know once I discuss that with Will and we thought about it, how viable that is. And uh, that'll be something we'll have to crack on with pretty soon because it's a job that we need to do 
in summer. Dun dun dun, so on that, uh, on that tantalising bombshell, I'll leave you for the time being, accompanied by the delightful sounds of the flock of stuff. I'll just sort of quickly come and check my handiwork. It kind of looks like so far so good. If anything, this is more like the puddles overflowing into the ditch rather than the ditch overflowing onto the drive. This is sort of the section you can see by the spoil where I was doing the quick quick and dirty, extra quick and dirty work. <laughs> um, oops, yes. These clumps of plants is where I had to stop because it wasn't that easy to, to dig amongst them. And the water has risen sufficiently to get past them and then carry on down the hill. So quite pleased with that. Look at the state of the drive there. <laughs> won't stop raining, just won't stop raining. Apparently we had the coldest day in the region recorded for summer ever yesterday. So that's the measure of what summer's like here. For those of you who were frightened to come to Australia because of the heat, you wouldn't uh, have much of a problem this year. Well, it is doing its job, it is doing its job. I think I could say with some confidence if it ever dried up enough I think I ought to be able to now lay the gravel down. So I just need all of this to go away.